Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, September 20th, 2017. I am the Nighthawk with the, our studio director, Miss Joanne, full panel. This week, on my immediate right, the Duke. Yuck. And Dave missing last week with his Wednesday night Twilight Men's League banquet or whatever it or was beers or whatever you want to and call it good, I, good banquet good time good banquet and i might add that uh team midas which happens to be my team won the scramble really this how big, about big... nine under for nine holes is that's... that is that right yeah. <laughs> wow. wow that's impressive who was on your team david uh bob berno oh, you know, that helps they tennis with bob monday night and jeff o'connell okay wow and, fine what a great team uh, who else did we have? And myself. And we had David Berno. Okay. Wow. He was up for the long weekend. Oh, really? And Gio, uh, their dad. Oh, really? So. Wow. That's good. As, so, in, as, in, George, as in George. Right. As George. Wow. I was telling Duke was like before a fine we started. Team. This weather, David. Oh, it's super I mean, I don't know if I've died and gone to heaven. This is <laughs> unbelievable. I've been swimming three times in the past week. That's great, I Hawk. took Impressive. his kayak out for the first time on yeah, Monday. Yeah, finally got the kayak out. I plan to go back down the lake, even though uh, last Wednesday when I was swimming, we had just gotten over a rainy, cool week, and the water was crystal clear. Now there are a zillion of those little green dots uh, in the lake. Uh, uh, LT uh, blooms are happening. It, I heard the phone. I don't know if it's a call. Are we all back in business? Well, now? Kind of, we are. The, but don't get can, if we get a, we got some calls last week. The, the speakers behind us. You'll hear the voice behind oh, us. Okay. But just try not to look at look ahead at the camera. Yeah. So, I guess, oh, yeah, we, we got do a, have call. a call. We got there a call. It is. Good evening. Get that bat off your shoulders and get the mud out of your cleats. You're the first caller tonight on the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. Hello. Well, well, I'm glad because I don't want to talk football first, which I will in a moment. Yeah, you're I tough giants, Lynn. Great effort so far. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> that won't take long, by the way. That, that's not very difficult to discern what the hell is going on there. But uh, baseball is, is a little bit more difficult to understand. We... Just a couple of days ago, it might have been yesterday, we surpassed the all-time record in the history of the entire game for the amount of home runs in a season. Yeah, right. That's 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 a pretty big deal. No, no thanks to the Red Sox. Well, no, no, no. But you have to admit, Richard, that that's that's pretty monumental. No, I'm not. Been playing baseball quite a while. I'm not disagreeing with. You. I'm just saying, no thanks to the Red Sox, oh, who've, well, had a, who've had a who've had a tear. Well, they've had a terrible home run year, but no, I hear your point. Yeah, there's been a ton of I don't of follow the American League. So there was a yeah. nice article today. Uh, th these, these, uh, these are mind-boggling statistics. This year, so far... I turned it up. I couldn't hear it. Okay. Are you, how many are you all on you're board? Good. You're, good. Are, you're good. Are you all on board? Yeah, We're all you're good. good. Okay. So, as I said, just a day or two ago, uh, we set a record for the most home runs in a season, regular season, in the history of Major League Baseball, which has been going on since uh, shortly after the Civil War. And, uh, you know, obviously the dead ball era doesn't count. But anyway, so there's an article today, 24 teams this season, 40% uh, of their runs have come as a result of the home run. Um. That's 24 teams this year. Not the rest. 40 percent of their runs have come as a result of the home run. Ten years ago, there were three teams. Uh, 17 years ago, we're getting into the Peds era, big time. There were six. Oh. 25 years ago, guess how many? None. You're right. Zero. Looks straight. So the, it begs the question. Obviously, the athletes are stronger, they're faster, but you cannot make me believe the ball is not juiced a little. Leonard, of course, the parks are smaller. The parks are much smaller today. Parks. They're building. They're bu they're building hitter friendly parks. Yeah. These new parks. There's no question. So that's part of it. You get better and stronger athletes. That's part of it. 
But the ball also, I think, has to be part of it. I'd make one quick point here. Strikeouts are increasingly driving me crazy. They've gone up four years in a row. It seems Every like year. the line is, hey, batter, don't worry about striking yeah. out. Just hit all the homers you Every can. Every year for the last four years, they've and set the all-time strikeout record. So strikeouts record. were an all-time record this year, too. Will be, yeah. So then that's part of it. All I, all I can say is, for like your mediocre hitters on up, they're telling them, hey, go for the fences. We don't care if you strike out a... 150 times, yeah. just get your share of homers. That's well, my, no, I don't, but, that's but, my but one you're point. Not, you're not, you're not, I don't, quite frankly, I don't think you're broaching new territory. When no, I, was I, a kid, think, I think when, you when are. I was a kid watching the Sluggers, the Mickey Mantles, the Eddie Matthews, uh, the Roger Marises, they struck out once every four times you bat. Sure, but we're talking, I'm not talking about your top tier, I'm talking about your Infielders. halfway mediocre yes. players. Yep. On up. We're talking a very different situation. Yep. Leonard on uh, MLB. Oh, <laughs> we're going to have to put that thing back in the front. Uh, Leonard on MLB today, they were talking about this very subject and they equate the increase in the home runs to the increase in the three point shots in basketball. Huh. Because even though it's a lower percentage, the the statistics <clears throat> say even uh, you're better off shooting 35 percent from three point right. range is to shoot 50 percent from right. 15 even feet. Even if you strike out another 30. And 40 they're saying the same thing with the home runs. Interesting. And uh, but David, so I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm trying to figure out what's going on there then. So are you saying? It's a certain type of player they're bringing up that makes this possible. They. When was the last time you saw a guy, Leonard? When was the last time you saw a guy choke up? Yeah. When was the last time you saw a guy hit like Ron Hunt? And they won't even hit oh, to the he, opposite he, he, field. Each he, he row still chokes. Up. Yeah. Think of yeah. all the. Think of all the. You know the. Uh... They're all. They're and I think part of it too is with all of the uh, shifts now. They won't even go. They don't the even step. try to hit a ball on the ground. They're they're just trying to get it up in the air. Right, David, a decent David, bunt is a hit every time. David, you make a good point though. Back when we were kids, the common law was, you got two strikes, you choke up on your bat and make contact. That what they said today. Mickey Mantle, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris didn't choke up with two strikes. But sure, no. but you're, Len, you're talking the the upper Elite. tier here. Yeah, the uh, Mickey Babe Ruth, I don't think choked up. Right, but we're not talking. Babe Ruth was a 300 hitter. Mickey Mantle well, was a 300 was. hitter till he got hit. Yeah. Right. These right. guys don't even hit 300 now. Yeah, but well, so but so but they're playing in smaller parts. That is. I don't think that that's, is, I don't think that's, that's a, a huge given. issue, is it? I think yeah, the guys that are pitching pitch faster, so the ball, if you hit it, goes out it farther. It's, it's simple physics. That's that makes a lot of it. That, well, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting yeah, philosophy. Because when you see a home run out, they always give you a graphic with a bat speed, the ball speed yes. going out of the ballpark. And, mm -hmm. and there is a lot more scientific training than David, there used to be. To your to be. point about the pitcher throwing so fast, Max Scherzer, one of the very best, his Achilles heel is he does give up home runs. And let me tell you, Max Scherzer has never given up a cheap home run. They get a ball right. off him, and he throws fast, and it's 450 feet. So but, what? Of all the, of all the, uh, I'll poll the panel. There's three of you. I take it. I'm not watching the TV, but <laughs> I'll poll the panel from left to right. So that should be David, Richard, and the hog. Yeah, you got it. Well, of all the variables that we've talked about, what what do you think? What 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 variable do you think is the most responsible for what's happening? I'd go back to my point. I think strikeouts. It You're just seems like nobody right. cares if the these guys are striking the out all the time. Starts, you got to start with David. Sorry, I uh, left to right. We're going left to right, Richard. Sorry. All right. I think the the main reason is is that there's an increased emphasis on home runs, and there are no consequences for striking out. Yeah, I think I said similar. That's, yeah, I'll, I'll second the that. The style huh? of the game is a, it's almost like softball. And I will give one reason I, like you, Leonard, believe the no, athletes get, are better yeah. conditioned. It's a 12-month sport. I know Bryce Harper in the offseason gets up 5 o'clock every morning oh, to yeah. go work out. Oh, Nutrition, yeah. if you want to, is a lot better. 
Uh, but I don't think it's one answer. I think all these guys, right, the, the smaller ballparks, the strikeout, it's not a big deal. Back in the day, if somebody struck out 100 times, yeah. unless they were an elite player, they were sent back down the minor leagues to learn how to hit. It wasn't cool. Now it seems like it's totally cool. Yeah. There's no I shame. Hope after yeah. I, no I shame. hope after I call, I, I mean, I hope after I hang up, that uh, if, if Fitzy's listening, I hope he calls and chimes in on this because he's a good baseball man. I'm well, yep. curious to see what he says. Well, Leonard, well, Leonard, uh, give us your take. What are you? You're asking us. What What do you think? I I I think uh, I, I I really you know I'm equivocating here a little bit because I, I think sound it's like you. I really think it's a combination. I know I was unfair in asking yeah. you each to name one thing, okay. so I'm going to name one thing. I, I think there are more athletes who are better capable of doing it. That's my one thing. So I'm sorry, run that, run that bias again? I just think there are more athletes today in baseball that are more capable of hitting a large number of home runs than there were in the earlier times. Which begs the question about the pets, because they're they're monitoring pets pretty well now. I mean, there's still some juicing, but not nearly like there was when, you know, you had Sammy Sosa and that bunch. Uh, I mean, Presumably. so pets are being watched, and and we're just blowing the pet era right out of the park. I mean, the, the pet era was is minor leagues compared to what's happening today. Here's a hey, I just made I just heard this listening to the Red Sox game. Red Sox, of course, won nothing winners last night. Now, fifteen and three in extra innings. I know, no, it's saving them. But I mentioned that because last night at Camden Yards, it was only one of sorry, one of six games this year, one of six Baltimore home games that there that that either, either team had a home run. One of just six wow, games in a, Baltimore. Well, you know what? I'll I'll tell you, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Leonard. You know what else they were saying today on MLB? was they took the Yankee-Minnesota game today as a perfect example. Who, who won that game? Yankees, 11-3. to three. Did they really? What happened was Minnesota, in the th- third inning, scratched out three runs, about base hit, base hit, sacrifice, yeah. base hit, a walk, uh, maybe a double somewhere. I know where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, the Yankees had like and, four and, home and runs. And they had, they had like eight guys, and they managed to get three runs. Yeah. The very next inning, yeah. they walk a guy, judge hits a home run. Okay. The next guy is Sanchez. He hits a home run, and it's all tied up. Wow. And that, yeah, yeah, that I, says it all. Right. I, 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 I guess that my one answer would be I think there's just more home run hitters out there. They're just better athletes. They're, they uh, they are it. specializing in that kind of player. They aren't specializing in the wiry, scrawny, fast. I mean, you're you you're, you're, you're guy. Oh, the, well, the, 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 the little f- wiry, that, but... scrawny guy. There's still a place for him because if you hit a home run, you got two guys on. It's worth more than a solo shot. So you still need a few guys to slap a few singles. Well, the, uh, certainly for the regular season, it's all slugfest. Now, when the playoffs come, they got to go back to regular baseball because you're going against your best pitchers. And, Leonard, right. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Baseball today is not the baseball we watched a half century ago. There's oh, very, listen, no. very little and, and, stealing. And that, and that can be said That can be said for much about everything yeah, in life. right. Football, they throw more. Basketball. Oh, I'm assaults. talking about life, not, right. not just sports. Yeah, but back when we were kids, Leonard, people stole bases. They sacrificed yeah. bunt. They bunted right. to get on, on first. It, it, it's a power game. Uh, home runs right. are sexy. Uh, I prefer the baseball of 50 years ago, but. Well, I'm not. Same here. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I like a mix. I'm not going. I'm not. I don't want to see one nothing games every night. I'll take I, them I, once in I, a quite while. Quite frankly, quite frankly, I saw about 14 years in a row of low scoring games. <laughs> I know you know. I know you. A lot of you folks. Yeah. Poo poo that. It doesn't mean much. But uh, I watched 14 years, 14 division World titles in a row Australians. where games were low scoring and we won them. Yeah. Well, but Leonard, I have no beef Leonard, with games like did, that. Was that before the PED 
era when Atlanta did all yes, that? Yes, it was. Yeah, yes, it was. Yeah, right. Because that's why I have such high regards to Pedro Martinez is because he pitched yeah. right in the middle of that era. Yeah. But right. uh, now well, we're blowing right now. We're blowing without PEDs. We're blowing PED right out of the water. Are we? Are you? Are we all? Are you all convinced that PEDs are? Not no issue now, or very little. Are we smart enough to know I'd, that? I'd for say sure? very little. I'm not so because sure about that. Because the money that. these guys make, I don't think they, they can take the chance. But isn't the line the drug the druggies are always ahead of one the one step uh, ahead? One step yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't natu- I wouldn't just uh, but a little, totally but look at the body type. Look at the body. The bodies type. aren't not, the same. They're not bloated. They're not bloated like they were in yeah. PED days. Well, the drugs I mean, may be different. These, these guys. These guys. I mean, like. You think Judge is on PED? I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying I wouldn't be so, given baseball's tainted history with drugs and how they've, uh, you know, tried to deal with it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't jump out to the yeah. conclusion. Wow, they've solved that problem. I would guess. Too. I wouldn't well, be I so say, confident. I, I don't think they've necessarily solved it, but I don't think it even close to what it was in its heyday. I no, wouldn't, I wouldn't no. think so, but I just wouldn't be totally confident about saying much of anything about drugs. I think they're pretty good now. I think, yeah. they're, I think they're pretty good. The guys they're, tested, they're tested irregularly, and the tests are pretty, you know, they're, they're pretty constant. The guys you've got to watch are the guys that come from the Dominican and Cuba and these poor places yes. where there's a lot more incentive to make it. David, right. I, I'm probably wrong, but I still think Albert Pujols was a juicer. Oh, I... he, he's, he's oh got... absolutely. What makes you think he was that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't blame him. When you, if you're living on an island where your life expectancy is about 30 years old. And I you're, totally agree. Uh, I, I we'd all do it. Yeah. You'd all do it. Maybe, maybe yeah. less if the, if the hurricanes keep yeah. coming their way. So, so it's, like the, it's like the price of, it's like the price of uh, gasoline in the wake of Harvey. Yeah, nice that those prices just jumped down. What was it, just a week later that they jumped down by four? Oh, I guess they didn't do that. Are they down a nickel, maybe? They're down a nickel. Well, that's big of them. Now, Leonard, do you, you didn't really get into which a lot of people believe is the baseballs are different this year. You know, I don't Well, that, 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 that could be an issue. I don't know. I mean, is that how Major hard League is that baseball, to, obviously, to nail that I issue? Mean, I would think independently. I mean, there's people in the stands last year who caught baseball. So if someone wanted to do an independent analysis, it would seem as if they could come buy some baseballs from last season yeah. and compare them to this season, ones that are being caught in the stands, and have an independent test made. Yeah. So I don't I, – I, I'm not ruling out the baseball part of it, but I don't think that's the big part of it. That seems, no, that seems hard to believe to me, too. I mean, baseball – I mean, they're, they know what everybody's saying. I mean, they, they, they say, say they've they been say testing they the balls, testing. and the balls are, I, I can't, are in, within specs. Right, I, I can't believe that's a big issue. Would do it. Somebody independently would have tested them, and there's people that caught balls in the stands last year, and there's people who've caught balls in the stands this year. They're available independently. Yeah. They're, they, they could be tested, and yeah. uh, I yeah. think you could arrive at a conclusion very quick in this day and age. And uh, I'm not saying that not wound a little tighter or something, or the seams are a little tighter for the, a little higher for the pitchers. Uh, but, but I don't think the baseball is the big element here. I really don't. No, I, I agree totally. I don't see how it possibly could I'm not could so be. sure the bats uh, aren't different. Because uh, they've... Well, uh, they're, they're, they're something we haven't discussed. No, I don't think anybody's brought that up, have they? Yep. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody make because a they, to uh, that. Do you notice at the end of the bat now, Leonard, how the top is scalloped out? Huh. Right, that, that little dip. It's kind of like an axe handle. Yes. Right. It, it, there are some bats that are, but but I don't see how that increases your bats. Well, and of course they switch to maple. A lot of these guys. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't know. We haven't heard. Quite frankly, the bats have not even been in, in on the discussion. Yeah. But Leonard, I'll but, tell you what. As much power as we talk about, in my humble opinion. The most exciting player in the National League is Trey Turner. Yeah, he, he hit the first pitch tonight for home. Oh, I don't want to bring Well, one run. That's all right. That's all right. The first pitch tonight he hit for a home run. Yeah, this guy. Oh. He, amb- he ambushed the brave starter. He pulled over the middle of the plate and hit it up. Yeah, he, uh, he, he's a legitimate old-fashioned leadoff hitter. A couple yeah. steals last night against Atlanta. He, he but was- he's not. But, but it's. It, 
going back when we were kids, a kid that size would not be a home run hitter. No. No. But you know what? Be. But Leonard, when you were a kid, these guys had jobs in the off season. They didn't have weight rooms and all this. You know, they were making. Oh no, no, they're better you know, athletes. I think I think that's the biggest. Thing. Yeah, forty. They're better athletes. Right. You know, I remember a lot of football. I remember Jim Hart, quarterback of the St. Louis Cardinals. He was a Metropolitan Life agent in the off season. Really? Yeah. And he was a good quarterback. And Hart was a very good quarterback. Yeah. 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 Now you said about the pitchers throwing. You know, it's so different. We've got, you know, it's a six inning ball game. You got a six inning ball game, and you got a three inning ball. Game. Hmm. Now, back in when we were kids, you know, it was an eight inning ball game, and then a one inning ball. Game. Yeah. Or nine, and you only or had a few guys that nine. last inning that could really throw hard. None of them could throw a hundred. Maybe ninety five, ninety six. That was a big deal. Uh, now, I mean, the last three innings of a game, you got guys coming in and throwing 95 to 100. Yeah. But if, if, you'd have had, if you'd have thrown that in cold turkey back in the 50s and the 60s, even with the Hank Aarons and the Eddie Matthews, the Joe Adcox, the, the uh, Mickey Mantles. Well, Dick Raditz uh, was uh, they, they, they a... They'd good. have had big problems. Yeah, they, they wouldn't have adjusted yeah, I mean, they've had time to adjust to this now. Leonard, back in 1966, Sandy Koufax's last season at age 30, I believe. Right, I think 30. it was arthritis in the elbow. I, yeah. I'm sure they could have fixed him today. He had a horrible elbow. He still pitched 25 complete games did he, did that he year. Really? In right. 1968, I remember Denny McLean, when he won 31 games, I remember somebody saying, oh, big deal. He had to have eight of his games finished up by a relief pitcher. God. I think he went like 31-6 and six mm-hmm. that year. But the thing, the thing that, here's, here's an interesting, and I hope Fitzy does call, I hope he's listening, because the Nolan Ryan, probably as good a right-handed pitcher as there, there ever was, maybe other than Walter Johnson, uh, I mean, there's a guy through 100 miles an hour. And uh, he wasn't giving up the number of home runs today that some of these 100-mile-an-hour pitchers give up. If your 100-mile-an-hour pitch is straight, they take you out. Leonard, Nolan Ryan today is just one of many, okay? Every team has at least one player that can hit 100 miles an hour. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody uh, throws in the upper 90s now. It's, but he, but, but he, he, was, he, was, he just... Dominated. Yeah, he was good, Nolan Ryan, and he was good he for dom- a long he time. He dominated. Yeah. And I mean, today, uh, a starter who throws that hard, he better have some movement on that 100 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. yeah, right. If they have no movement, a professional hitter is going to hit a 200 mile an hour fastball. Well, oh yeah, today they're they're they're, they're just they're so refined. But um, anyway, I I, I don't. I, I don't know. I only bring that up because the stats, or uh, those stats I throw at you, I think are just startling. Leonard. You know, Leonard. Yes, yes. L- what about your Giants? Well, the Giants, you know, what can you say? If I'm, if I'm ownership, you know, and I'm not, I, I, heads would roll, and they would roll quickly. I would start Geno Smith at quarterback. Not the, nothing against Eli. I'm just saying with the offensive line that exists, Geno Smith gives you a better chance to win because he can move around, throw on the run, cause a little mayhem. Eli, with this offensive line, the season is history. Nothing's going to happen. I mean, uh, I, 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 unless, unless God strikes him with a index finger and lightning hits him and they somehow turn this thing around, uh, Reese is gone. He, he, he should be looking for a job already. Yeah. He's, he's gone. McAdoo's gone. The only guy that stays is Spagnuolo, as far as I'm concerned, the defensive coordinator. I I mean, the Giants have absolutely no alternative but to fire the GM and their coach. Even if they make the playoffs, I They didn't fire the GM a couple of years ago. What's going to change now? You know what I read today, Leonard? You can. They they screwed up their picks. Their picks were awful with the offensive line. They had two number ones and a number two in the last three, four years and they all on the suck. offensive line. They all stink. Yeah, you cannot terrible. make those mistakes at that level and succeed. Eric, and they, they don't. The, the people who made those decisions, 
they ought to go, and they haven't yet. Yep. And that, but, but that's the New York Giants for you. Yep. As, as the Hawk knows and David knows and Richard may know, the Giants are one of the more staid organizations in all of professional sports. They, they're not reactionary. It takes them about a millennium to make a decision. <laughs> they're, not quick, they're not quick to make decisions, and they don't fire people quickly. But in this day and age, you've got to be mobile. You've got you to you 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 dodge. You've got to make decisions. You've you got you to think on the run. And my other point is, Odell Beckham, please don't sign him to a contract. That, that would be a monumental yeah. mistake. The guy, we're losing the ball game late in the game. He makes a first. He makes a first down. Yeah. He celebrates like yes. it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. What well, the hell is wrong yeah, with the man? Pathetic. The yeah. man is mentally deficient. Yeah. And he had the fifth or sixth most drops in the NFL last year, yeah. and they call him the best receiver in football, which is just bull crap. Yeah. Bull crap. Yeah. No, please don't. What sign about him Leonard? Long term. What about? Oh. What about that idiot tight end who ha- you, can, you can take that game uh, Monday night and you can break it down to about three different boo-boos. Brandon Marshall. Would be. Uh, Brandon Marshall, but before he that. He dropped the pass. Before the that, tight that. The tight end, Ingram. Uh, he makes Manning a touchdown. They, they tie the game up and he oh, gets yeah. a 15-yard penalty for celebration. Is that, right. is that right? So then, and I, I watched it, do, and that was rather dubious, quite frankly. So then, oh. I so, thought today, am I wrong or not? Didn't the NFL state here at the end of the, at the beginning of this season, at the end of last season, that they were even going to allow more leeway for celebration? Well, I think he and did. I saw nothing. I saw nothing with Ingram that looked yeah. like. I think uh, he did some lewd gestures, is what I think. Okay. Is that, is well, that I don't know what it was. I think, I think the dancing had a little too much something. Uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But he, anyway. He didn't, jump, he, didn't jump into a, he didn't jump into a waste bucket like Ezekiel Elliott, who was not given a penalty. No. You remember that? No, but I think, I think what, it, what it was, it wasn't the celebration. The fact that he celebrated, it was there was some taunting or something. But anyway, okay. so to, to take oh. this thing back a ways, so now instead of be, side 7-7, seven, oh. seven, they kick off from the 30. Right. They kick it out of bounds. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. now... Is, the, the, the punter and the kicker have not had good years. So now, but the kicker, the reason he kicked it out of bounds is because he's trying to kick it farther because he's kicking an extra 15 yards. It was like a golf shot when you try to swing hard. You go right, and, and that's what happened. He came over the top. He came and, over and the top. And so, sure enough, now Detroit gets a ball on a giant 40. Oh. Yeah. On a giant 40. And they turn it over. And they turn it over, and then the Giants turn it right who back. Do you blame, who do you blame that turnover on? Eli Manning. Absolutely. That Too bass was guy. way yeah. behind Too him. Too behind the guy. Had him wide open. Yeah. But Eli, Eli, I'm just saying, if I'm the owner, I bench Eli next week. I bench him. Yeah. I don't give a shit if he's my excuse the language. But yeah. they, I don't of course, care will... if he's my franchise quarterback. I don't. I want to win. I got a business I'm running here. Bottom line, if he had stockbrokers, if the Giants owners had stockbrokers, I mean the stockholders to answer to, they'd have to be a lot more proficient than they are. Oh, they would said, never do. They're they one of the most that, staid, obviously. and you, you, might, I know, I know. David and Hawk will agree. They're one of the most staid organizations in my lifetime in professional sports. Yeah. Now, Leonard, to your points, I'm 100 percent with you on OBJ. I would not re-sign him because he's minimum going to get 18 million dollars a year. I, I, I wouldn't waste a cap. It's it, right, and I'd rather spread that money around, uh, starting with a left tackle. Uh, number two. Maybe we can trade him halfway through no. the season for a team that's going so nowhere who has a good left tackle. I'd do that in a heartbeat. Now with Eli, I would Ma- trade Eli too. Right. Well, with Eli oh, wow. Manning, nobody. It, who's going to take Eli? It, it, I'll, I'll tell you who will take him. A team just like the New York Giants, a great defense, but they need a quarterback. That would be the Houston Texans. Okay. Well, they need an offensive line. Wherever, wherever he go. Uh, but right, but. Uh, if the Giants are going to trade him, it wouldn't be Geno Smith. It would be Davis Webb would be under the center. Oh, no, Webb can't come in right off. 
Well, Geno listen, Smith if you have a losing him. record and you give up the season by oh, trading no, Manning. I, I think Geno, I think Geno right now could come in and actually make it quite interesting. We not win, but it'd be a lot closer. Listen, I, Geno, look, he really did a good job with the right. Jets. Let Leonard, I love you, but that's a horrible argument because if you can't make it with the Jets, and what do they have, a 37-year-old? Well, the Jets have nobody. Well, you can't, how can you blame Geno? When you're playing for a, a triple A team? Yeah, but the Giants are a better team than the Jets. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But Gino their line is any better. Gino played with a crap team. Yeah. Gino's got a great arm. Yeah. He can move around. He can throw on the run. He can feather a pass. Yeah. Plus, he also man, gets a lot man, of interceptions. Which our two-time Super Bowl MVP never could do. David. He cannot feather a five-yard pass. Do you know what, he cannot feather it. Do you know what Leonard is? He's one of those fans that are his favorite players, the backup quarterback. Leonard, you, you realize you no, never in a... No, I bet. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Our man Manning, I mean, I, I watch other football games, and I watch quarterbacks actually, believe it or not, you know what they do? They throw spirals. But Leonard, a, a you beat, Leonard, that, you beat that, my you guys twice, Leonard. From Eli. You well, might not want Eli's to forget a Hall two of Fame Super Bowl wins. Yeah. You beat well, my yeah, guys well, I twice. Don't think, I think Eli's Hall of Fame credentials, unless unless he wins another Super Bowl, he, I, this is my prediction. Isn't two unless enough to get in? Oh, he's win another here, Super Bowl, he does not win the Hall. Leonard, when Eli Manning retires, he could end up top, top three or top four top of ten all now, quarterback. Right? He's oh. like number seven right now of, of yardage, time. completions, touchdown passes. Leonard, forget he it. He's in. He clearly has He's the already numbers. in. It's, it's a slam well, dunk. I, here's, my, here's my retort to you guys. I got, a, I got a baseball team I rooted for that won 14 division titles, and you think they're worthless. No, but you... We didn't use, we didn't use that word. That's your well, word. Well, pretty much. I mean, uh, not no, you necessarily. Not, but, not true. But you yeah, but you your three guys are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you're going to take your Hall of Fame credentials back? Yeah. Leonard, let's get... You don't get, give that any credence. Get back but, uh, to, get back but, to but Eli. Eli. Eli Manning, to me, is not a Hall of Fame okay. quarterback. I am sorry. The two, the, the two Super Bowls that he won, we were so lucky to win those. It was like we were... It was so lucky. We shouldn't have won them. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. The Giants should not have won either of those Super Bowls. But they did. Yeah. I know they did. You want to give one or two back, I'll take it. Do you disagree with that? Should they have won them? Uh, hey, all I, I know think is they outplayed them certainly on the first one. I would give them one. Their, 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 their defensive their defense, Brady was under right. under attack that under whole game. Why did I just want to make it a split? Well, I'm, just, I'm just stoking the fires, which I'm notorious for. Right. They should have split those games, that, probably. So I'm just hoping won. that Fitzy, Fitzy, I God hope you're listening. Get on the phone and jump in here. Well, Leonard, well, get on the phone right one now. last point on Eli. Yes. He was sacked five times, hit numerous times. Eric Flowers, our number one draft pick from three years ago, Gave up three sacks and three hits alone, okay? Oh, he's awful. I mean, tell me something I don't know. Well, the, the sad part about it, Leonard, is that everybody, uh, Ray Charles could see <laughs> that the Giants' offensive line was their biggest problem last year. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. And, and uh, Reese did nothing, that's, did nothing to right, make it better. Right. Jerry Reese yeah, will be the, fired. I, blame that. I don't blame that on Reese. Yeah. I blame that on ownership. Jerry Jones and Kraft for the Patriots, they're much more involved. But Jerry, See, the, the Tish, Tish and the mayor has always yeah, he's, stood back. But Jerry, the mayor has always stood back. Okay, but the, I mean now, and the Tish and Mara, I tell you, I tell you, I bet you, I, I tell you what now, Tish and Mara are hearing the boos, and they're watching the stands empty in the late in the third quarter. I tell you what, there's going to be some moves made in the off season. Okay, couple points, Jerry Jones is the general manager of the Cowboys. So that's why he gets more publicity. Number two, the worst thing I'm going to say all night, every NFL team since the start of the new playoff system about 20 years ago, when you go 0-2, you have a 10.5% chance to make the playoffs. So literally, if we lose to Philly this week, it's your history. The only saving grace we have right now, 0-2, is every other team in our division has one loss. So The last two games, I have not... I've turned it off before the end of the game. Now, me Bo- too. I couldn't watch it. That's unusual too. for me. Yeah. Bobby Hart, That's unusual for our me. right tackle, 
still didn't practice. So I expect Justin Pugh to be back at right tackle mm-hmm. with uh, the Canadian kid at left guard. Uh, right. So well, we still had nothing. We had nothing there. And I can uh, tell you, the, the uh, Eagles. You are... know the answer to this, but uh, I, I, I hadn't heard the figure till this week. Uh, the most. Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use here? The the franchise, the professional sports franchise in the world that's worth the most money. Dallas Cowboys. I would six point two billion. Isn't it one of the uh, European soccer teams? Yeah, Manchester, no, Manchester no. United or six something. Point, six point two billion. The Dallas Cowboys. Okay. No, but the I Giants are like in the top two or three. Pats are oh, top ten. I don't think so anymore. I don't think so anymore. Mm-hmm. Don't think so anymore. They, their product has been so lousy. They're nope. not, they got to have a product. They got to have a product. Okay. Well, they can't run. Yeah. They can't run. Okay, Leonard. <laughs> they can't. I hope Fitzy's list. Come on, yeah. Fitzy. Okay. I'll you the call. Got to go, Leonard. Yeah, bye-bye. Good, good night. Later, we'll bye. see you. Oh, can I bring up one other point? Quickly. Real quick, real quick, because baseball's almost done. I, I wanted to bring this up when I called you from uh, SunTrust Park in Atlanta. Something they do that's real nice there is, and I felt pretty good about it. Sell so concessions for I reasonable prices, games. or is that the Georgia Yeah, game? I went to two games there. Before they play the national, of course, this is not on TV. Before they play the national anthem, they ask every veteran in the stadium to rise. Huh. And then they asked the other people who were seated to applaud. Nice, no, nice I, touch. I thought that was very nice. Nice touch. I thought that was very nice. I never told you that. I wanted to tell you that the night that I called from SunTrust yeah. Park. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing they're doing, is, which is kind of neat, they're one of the few parks to have one – the, they're one of the few new parks to have halogen lights, meaning you can turn them off and on instantly. Oh, all right. So the tomahawk chop now, when they get really something going big – they turn the lights off, and they have the people with their cell phones turn their flashlights on, okay. and they do the tomahawk, tomahawk chop with yeah. their cell phone flashlights on in the dark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. neat. It's pretty neat to watch. So. But anyway, that's it. Thanks, well, Leonard. We'll see ya. I just Bye. mentioned one non-sports thing. Leonard just mentioned veterans. I thought of it. You're probably watching this. The Vietnam Ken, thing? Ken Burns is oh, latest. I, uh, watching, I totally I spaced it. out Sunday night. I've watched, boy, that's pretty You'll tough watching cable, this. You'll have cable, or you can watch it all. If you got Xfinity, I watched all three of them last night. Oh, is that right? Yeah. But that's some pretty yeah. pretty good stuff. Yeah, I've been it's watching really them every night, too. Good stuff. Yeah. I think the phone is ringing. I'll probably watch it tonight when I get home. Yeah. Again, 527-6449. We'd love yeah. to get some more calls. Hang on just a second I, before I have my next thought. Hang on. Yep, here we go. You're on Franklin County's number one sports show. Go ahead. Hi, bud. Hi. How you doing? Good. What's on What's your bad? mind? Well, uh, actually, I'm looking at you right now, um, and I, I need to ask you about New York. <laughs> As in the New York football giants? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to talk New York Yankees? Does that, does that hurt or what? Well, let me just say this Sunday's game is the season. If we lose Sunday, the season literally is over for the wow. New York Giants which is sad. They went 11-5 and five last year. Really? Uh, we were all, or most of us, were exposing another 10-6, 11-5 season and going deep in the playoffs. So uh, no offensive line, as we discussed with Leonard, has really put us in a uh, snafu here. Uh, and, and agreed, Leonard, uh, you know, kind of took up the show. But uh, <laughs> to say Thanks that... Jeez, uh, uh, New York, uh, more sack time than, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, it, it's tough to watch, especially with their defense. That literally, to me, is a championship defense, but they're on the field for like 38 minutes a game. Uh, so, uh, again, this, this is the game this week. Uh, I expect changes. I think Orleans Darqua is going to get more carries. Um, you're, you're going to see a change in the offensive line. You won't see Bobby Hart starting this game. Uh, it's just... Again, we're in the first week. Uh, first week, second week? We're, we're going into week three right now. Okay. And so many injuries now. What are we looking for it? Well, that was part of the problem nobody mentioned is our starting linebacker, B.J. Goodson, did not play in all-pro cornerback Janoris Jenkins didn't play. Hey, tell me about injuries. I mean, that, that, that hurts. Um, every, every, hey, believe me, I'll give you 
I'll talk for five minutes on Patriots injuries. Yeah. Every everybody has injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the, and the, the Pats are going to get hurt. Uh, every every team is going to have uh, hurts. Uh, just I was, and it was painful watching New York. Now, caller, I have a TV question for you. I know you're a Star Trek fan. Have you watched the new show, The Orville, with Seth MacFarlane? I have indeed. Okay, that's a riot. He sounds just like William Shatner. It's on Fox. It's been on Sunday night, the first two episodes, and it's on uh, tomorrow night. I, I, I have watched it, and it's uh, the, the first two uh, shows, uh, they were uh, funny, and now it's getting more serious. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know where they're heading on that one. Yeah. yeah. So, caller, I'm going to give you a call at your home tonight at 10 o'clock. Talk to you later. Okay, 10-4 out. Thanks Bye. for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Keep the calls yeah. coming. 527-6474. Um, I'm sorry, 527-6... No, that's the... No, you got the wrong number. No, that's the six. business number. Go ahead, Duke. 527-6449. No, I, I know you're wrong. 527-6449, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we, we've beaten the Giants up pretty good. Now, David, there are a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Uh... The CFL, and this is going to trickle down north to, to the 48 main states here. The CFL designated last week no pads during practice during the week. Wow. I mean, as in during the regular season. Yes. Okay. Wow. Now, David, we had a discussion last year. Why are there so many teams with bad offensive lines? So I'm, I'm sitting in Price Chopper parking lot about 11 o'clock a couple of nights ago. My wife has, had to pick something up. So I flip it over somewhere to CBS Sports. And Walter Jones, Hall of Fame left tackle, he retired in 09 from the Seattle Seahawks. He went to your very point last year. They're not practicing during the week. They're not getting the reps. Hence much poor offensive line play. I mean, I, we know the Giants stink, and if they don't have the worst offensive line, they probably have the second worst. But uh, there are a lot of teams out there that are actually suffering what we're suffering, and they're hardly practicing during I the think, summer, David. I'm going to tell you something. I think football is in big trouble. Mm. It was just uh, just driving over, I, I think. And we're going to get to your article last week, which I ran out of time. I forgot to bring, right. but I can. We'll, we'll get but the, uh, they, it just came out the last couple of days that kids who play tackle football before 12 years old okay. have all sorts, two and three and five times as many uh, depressions and this and that. If Parents didn't need an excuse not to have their kids play football. But, but aren't you, haven't you made the point a bunch of times as a veteran coach you are? I mean, you, haven't you been saying you'd rather see, you weren't talking about football, just football, but don't you think kids are playing any sport seriously? Well, they aren't. Early? Haven't you made that point? They aren't playing as much, but football, football in, in particular, has... Uh, with these concussions and uh, CTE or the whatever. Brain, brain traumatic brain. traumatic brain David, stuff. is it really that bad in high school? They don't hit Well, they're Well, saying, they're saying now that if kids play football before they're 12 years old, oh. they can have serious problems. Now, when I played football, I played of course we back never when. Played. What, what the, level of football did well, you play? Well, seventh just, and eighth grade, they just started the flag football. So we only played really? flag football, huh. in seventh, which was fine. Then w once I got to high school, I played two years. It was tackle. But uh, we'll get to your numbers in your article last week. But uh, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, but there was a kid selling their $20 coupon card, plastic right. card. And I might have told the story already a couple weeks ago at my house, and I always give to him. And I said, dude. I said, real men play football. Don't, don't play soccer. He says to me, I wanted to, but my mother didn't let me play. Right. It's got to be happening Very all honest over the kid. place. So that was it. But I'm reading Duke's article, and I'll let him speak. And again, this is, Mo, this is Wall Street Journal. The state of football Journal. in Vermont. I'm sorry. I, I thought about bringing that. It's in my pile back home. But this is a Wall Street Journal story two Fridays, two weeks ago, two weeks ago tomorrow. And it was interesting. It's, uh, you know, it's football, tough times for football. Two datelines, side-by-side -side stories, the same author, Blaine Higgins, maybe, 
Uh, one date line, Rutland, Vermont. The other date line, Mobile, Alabama. You can kind of guess where football's <laughs> doing well and football's not doing so well. But there are some stats I wish I had in front of me. There are some stats noting that Vermont's population, as we know, is going down. But the reference specifically was uh, kids like maybe 14 to 60, I mean, high school age kids. I mean, their numbers are down, uh, boys are down about 10%. And just, uh, again, it led with uh, Rutland Dayline was, uh, who's the uh, Mount, Mount St. Mount Joseph? Mount St. Joseph, who used to be state yes, champs, right. Division just One. Just saying their proud history. And, of course, they hooked up with Pulteney, the only way they could even keep their program going. And they're playing D3. They beat right, MV, MVU a couple weeks ago. And uh, that may be the only win they get all uh, season. And MVU actually got a reference in the story. Eric Bushy was quoted, coming, coming, kind of going against the grain, but just noting that MVU has started their team, no thanks to taxpayers. And there was a reference that the program got a big help by a, an anonymous 10,000 donation by one of the supporters. But basically, just citing numbers, uh, the subhead on the Vermont story was, uh, you know, Vermont football folks, you know, hope to keep the sport going, but acknowledge but that it, Duke, it may be history. St. Albans is uh, one of their larger communities in the what, state. What, DFA's got 29 DFA players? Three and 0 could end up in the state championship this year. 29, 29 players. players. So as we talked about, obviously a lot of these players are two-way players, obviously, right? And, and they only have, for the first wow. time in a long time, they don't even have a freshman team. Oh, is that, either, is that right? It's either JVs wow. or varsity. Yeah. No freshman well, team. Well, I think freshman in team. general, and I've talked to you on the golf course and stuff, um, I think kids are playing with sport. I, I, I know MVU a couple years ago had to drop well, We their, talked about their baseball team. I mean, well, Roy was having... Trouble getting MVU enough kids, didn't wasn't have he? a JV team for two, three years. They finally got one. They had right. enough kids barely to get by. But that's of been course, an issue, on the varsity right? team, he'll probably carry 10, 12 players, okay? And hmm. ditto on the. So not, not just but football. But MVU soccer, I think, dropped the freshman program a couple of few really? years ago. Kids are. Well, it's, for it's one thing. Commitment. Right, but for one thing, fewer at a lot of these schools. Let there there at, are fewer give me, kids. Give me the BFA numbers. What's BFA? I don't student? think BFA has 900 kids. Oh, no, you're right. And it's had about, a 1.12, 1,300? Oh, five, six years ago. David, wow. or, uh, Duke, I, wow. last year they had about 870, give or take. Wow. When David and I graduated, we're two years apart, we yeah. had about 1,300 wow. students. That's they unreal. had about 12 or 1,300 when ME was there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And David. So that's a 25% decrease or so. Uh, Why is my taxes for schools? Well, that's that, a, that whole, a that whole issue. Show. That's a 4.1 students per teacher. Because, that, but that's because, another show. Because I think the per capita, what we're paying per capita kid in Vermont is uh, the highest figure, country. 18,000. And our testing the national is average 11 worse. or something. Yeah, yeah. but that's fact, a whole show. Though I don't blame the schools nearly as much as I blame the parents. The parents aren't raising their kids right, yeah. but that's some, my... And there's, and there's some folks, I think I can think of a former teacher and former St. Albans official who's made this point. I don't mean to put words in his mouth, but boy, in fact, I just saw a story the other day. Harvey Silverglade probably means nothing. He's a prominent Boston attorney, but kind of goes against the grain. I think he's, uh, you know, sometimes when, you know, folks are going one way, he goes the other way. But he just had a story. He's been tracking this for years about college expenses. And it was a story in the Herald. He just laid <clears throat> much of the blame on, on administration costs. He said it's insane. Oh, yeah. it's how, you know, go back 20 years, you had a dean and an assistant dean, maybe. Now you got like a 10 assistant dean. He David, just said. When it, we were at BFA, yeah. we had an assistant principal and yeah. three guidance counselors. And but that he, was it. And he's followed, he's written about this, but he just laid much of the blame on to him an absurd amount of administration, oh, high paying administrative yeah. But I still say the best thing about sports is, and this is what a former boss of mine pointed out to me, it's not so much playing the sport. If you're playing on hockey, you've got 18 guys on the team. You're playing football, you've got 35 guys on the team. Baseball, you might have 20. It's human nature. You're not going to get along with everyone, but you learn to you know, strive together. Now, I'm out of high school, I'm out of college. I go to Handy's, Handy Cadillac on uh, Route 7 north of St. Albans. I need a job. Smart guy. David Handy hires me, and they've got 30-plus employees there. Again, human nature, I'm not going to like everybody at Handy Cadillac. However, in order to achieve our objectives, David, we've got to do what we've got to do. And that's, sports will teach you that. The uh, Sports has a lot of good things. Yes. But we're losing it. 
we're losing the value of sportsmanship. All you got to do is watch that giant game. The hot dogging, just like Leonard said with Beckham, they're losing a the game. He gets a first down and he's dancing. Is that right? Give me yep. a break. Uh, but the, the it's not any different than baseball's doing the same thing. Every sport, they've lost the respect. Yes, that's the word for their opponent. Yeah. And and they've, I I don't want to say cheapened it, but they they ignore the lack of sportsmanship by giving it a false exuberance. And saying, "Oh, they're really into the game," and uh, you know, even golf, like the Ryder Cup, all the yelling and the screaming. <laughs> you know, enough's enough. Yeah. David, you, you've also mentioned your again your another concern about kids just getting getting burned out and stuff. Well, by, it's the parents. The parents, well, the parents have overdone course, think, it, thinking their kids are going to be the next uh, John big star. Well, geez, they start. I think they should ban. If I were the king. I would ban all organized youth sports till eight years old. That right? That's my first thing. Now kids are getting into this at like five. Oh, five. they got their five and six and seven. They got travel teams for seven year olds for yeah. national championships for basketball right. players. It's it's right out of control. And and you got I've said it before a hundred times, you got eleven year olds and twelve year olds having Tommy John surgery because they've yeah. played 200 baseball games, and it's not because they aren't doing it to make the kids good. These are all, these tournaments are put on to make money. Yeah. It's all a yeah. big business now. Yeah. So back to the Wall Street Journal. So the flip, the flip story was Dateline, Mobile, Alabama. And you can imagine the stats being so different down there. And the, and the story cited Alabama and Mississippi as the two states with, I think it was about 20% of high school kids are playing football, just wow. soaring popularity. Yeah. So it's just, you know, just but I've mentioned diametrically before, opposed. Uh, the white man in this country, in the NFL, you're going to see that rapidly decline because the Pop Warner numbers, we've talked about that before, is just plummeting in the last uh-huh. half dozen years. White kids aren't playing football so anymore. So if, if you had a high school age son at this point with all this, so would you have just zero concern? Hey, kid, oh, you want to play football? I'd love to see you out be there. Be out back every day playing tossing and catching. So you have, no, will, you have no concern about this stuff? I will tell you stuff? right now, at age 59, if Coach Jeff Murray called the show right now, <laughs> it's that we want to get you in some postgraduate studies, but we need you to be the right guard uh, Friday yeah. night against uh, South Burlington. I would say I'm there. So, again, you have, you have zero concern about... I mean, they're not making up the, this stuff. I will be honest with you. I would have more concern with my 16-year-old child taking my car out on a Friday night yeah. than I would. Okay. Well, you probably should have concern about that. Too. You know, car deaths in Vermont used to be about 150 a year. They're about half that back in the 60s. Well, it seems like we've come. Seems way like down, we've, and now they're going back coming up. Back up. Again. But there's things far more dangerous than, than, than playing football. And again, I don't concern myself. In football in Vermont, no disrespect towards Vermont football. It's not Florida football. Mm-hmm. It's not Texas football. These guys are, you know, eight inches taller and 60 pounds heavier. Well, the, uh, I, hey, I had let my kid play football. He, I think, you know, we've gotten so damn politically correct about everything, too. And you just go, oh, you know, oh, 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 they, they do this, say that, you know, but I think the the real problem with football is going to be a demographic thing. I don't think it's so much. That's certainly. I fine. don't think it's going to be so much racial. I think it's just going to be only the poor folks. Whoever comes play. out of the southeast or Texas will be playing football. Yeah. And, football uh, is just so so big down it there. It is, yeah. But I mean. Uh, but you know what, David? I get excited for football every week. Do I enjoy it as much today as I did? Yesteryear, no, because as we talked about, the football is lousy. The game has changed, and I'm hoping uh, guys like Leonard Fournette will bring running back into football. You're talking pro football. Pro football. I don't watch college hardly at all just because they don't go to class. They're, they're just like basketball. They're not real students. I mean, if you like the sport, you might want to watch some kind of. There's some pretty pretty fun stuff if if you're not going to be bothered by. 
the student athlete thing. I mean, there's some, you know. Well, let, let's talk about. My, my, du my Dukies are borderline top 25 I, again, I think. Uh, the sna Snacks Harrison, they told the story on him the other day. He, uh, I, I think he, I don't remember the school, flunked out or got thrown off a big time program. He went to a junior college and quit there and uh, he went to work for Walmart. And he was going to be offered a full-time job at $15 an hour at Walmart. The coach he had at junior college went to a major school, yep. and he remembered snacks. He called them up and says, we got room for you on this team. And it saved his life. Now, Harrison, of course, signed a big contract, making, I think, what, $8.5 million a year. Huh. Uh, but college, and again, I don't want to go down this alley, but the basketball and Football, these guys don't know to class. I heard a college guy about all the tutors they have. They don't even go to class, do these these players. They, they no, all course, have Of course, tutors. UNC still has its academic scandal still right, hanging over them. But they do not go to class. They have tutors. They go on the big table like Again, this. I hate to have you use too broad a brush here and stuff, but I realize a lot of these folks don't. But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, hey, even I wouldn't Duke, de demonize everybody. Here. Even Duke has sold their soul. Oh, they did. They, they sold. Between a basketball, absolutely. a football, a lacrosse, they, you don't need to yeah. be. The guy, the quality of the, the student, not the athlete, the quality of the student that makes a Duke athletic team is nowhere near the quality of the athlete, of yeah. the non-athlete, the, sure. the chemistry major. Sure, but I'm you not sure me. that's saying much. Duke, like Middlebury, could fill up the school with, you know, I think at least, I think Middlebury at least because they, they, Matt, they get Matt, guys like okay. Matt St. Amore. Matt, Matt St. I'm not knocking near it. I'm just, I'm just saying those, those top schools could literally fill up the school with taking a valedictorian right, but from D1, every high school. So. D1 programs David. at the top, at the highest level, there is no way. There is no way those guys are anywhere near the same kind David. of students Duke, as sure. regular Duke. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that, yeah. but I, th I still think I still think they're they're not terrible students. Oh, all oh, oh, those David. guys, the number one basketball like, well, before, players. Before before Duke got good in football, and you can say, well, that's maybe well, they're, why they got they're good. it's relatively. They were good. they were tip, they were always an academic top ten yeah. team. Well, that's, and they were the worst team in football. David. I guess you're saying that. That's I'm why. saying that's David, exactly. To your I'm point, not sure it's changed. That I wish I had a better handle on has that. Has four freshmen playing this year that are mock draft in the top twenty. They don't have. Okay. They don't happen to be injured. Okay. If they write their name, that's probably worth 50 points on the staff. They, if, if they just get a 2.0, they're, they're not you're, I students. Think, I, think you're, I think you're just exaggerating it, that a bit. A bit now, I think the guys that play for UVM, no, those guys, guys are college. students. They're no, students. I, I agree. Yeah. I but the guys think, that think, go to Duke, no. And I've no, said I this you, I think to you're you being before. A little, I think you're being a little over the David, top. Now, there might be more. These aren't, I don't think there are too many real stupid kids who are playing. Uh, the, I do. The uh, the so top hard. the top twenty or thirty percent of the football team, I'll guarantee you, those guys wouldn't they'd have thrown their application away if they if they couldn't play football well, they'd have never I'm got not into Duke. Disagreeing, they certainly wouldn't have gotten into Duke. I'm just saying uh, that said, I don't think they're stupid kids who are being led by the hand and who are incapable of writing a sentence. I don't disagree. Oh, I saying. think they're getting called. Now, are they as bad as the guys that go to Florida? I mean, I hate them, you know. Uh, maybe. David, if, can I ask they're really good. Question? If they're really I good, think, we've got a program for I you. I think the ACC in general is a few notches above yeah. the SEC. David, with these hurricanes in the Caribbean, do you know what makes me nervous? They never talk about it. these medical schools down in the Caribbean. From what I've heard and read, they're like the easy. If you really want to get your medical degree, go down the Caribbean and, and you'll get it. I hope, like I, hope, I, hope, I hope they got out of there already because I'm not yeah. sure how much is left down yeah. there. I haven't seen the news yet today, but I heard PR. Puerto Rico got, Puerto Rico got today, smashed. Which I'll be in down there in December. Right. Boy, you, no. you may or may not they be They may not even have December. electricity St. by Martin, December. St. Martin, I'll be down one of my stops. So it's, yeah. So, David, um, I want to bring up and I'm, the ESPN thing, Jamel Hill, you weren't here last I, week? Uh, but I'm familiar with it. Okay. But I, I finally dug up the name where she, and it's still actually on the Internet. It's, the story has still got a little bit of weight I love left the headline. I saw you, 
ESPN distances itself. Yeah. Didn't sound like okay. they of course, put a lot of distance. They, they talked to her. They didn't suspend her, blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the real story is, I mentioned last week, I didn't know his name. Bob Iger is the CEO of Disney. Right. And the word out is, since Trump was a businessman, did it. He's kind of opened the gates for business people. So Iger, it appears, may be running for the Democratic nomination. Really? This, guy, Disney this guy's, owns Disney, ESPN, this guy's Disney, Disney's head? Yeah. And he doesn't mind the left-wing slant on ESPN because this way when he announces his candidacy for the Democratic nomination, he... Well, uh, I read the, uh, the mea culpa that the director of programming wrote for ESPN. Was it, which was a pretty tepid mea it, culpa? Uh, yeah, I said they don't really... They are a sports network. They aren't. Well, that's a hawk. Uh, they don't. Now they appreciate that. They, they, uh, they understand that in some instances. They understand that there's some discussion that slants to politics, but they want to focus on the sports, and they do not condone what, whatever her name is, did. Jamil Hill is that her yeah. name? But, let's face it, if she just said sure that she thinks that Trump is a great guy, they'd have canned her ass, uh, just like they did uh, Schilling. Schilling, yep, yep. And, and that's the thing that drives me nuts. And I'll tell you what really so drove me nuts. Schilling, for the record, got into and I and realize Schilling's got say, a big mouth anyway. Right. Yeah, Schilling, that hardly helps himself. Yeah. I haven't yeah. heard too much talk about Schilling's potential U.S. Senate candidacy against Elizabeth Warren. Last Don't week. Don't hold your breath on that happening. Yeah, no. Coming after the show. The Red Sox had played, so I wanted to watch the Red Sox highlights. And that's when they unfurled that huge black banner with oh, banner. white print Ra in it. Racism, in, racism is as in America is as... Baseball. No, you, is as American as baseball. Racism right. is as American. Ba ra racism. That, that's an interesting okay. banner. Right. I mean, I, you can take that different ways. Right. I didn't know and what to make of that. the idiots that did that. You're a journalist. I took it, okay, let's take the word out racism. Now, racism is as American as baseball. All right, let's go. Interesting My word. mother is as American as baseball. Let's go apple pie is an American as baseball. How about Chevrolet is an American as baseball? These idiots couldn't even come up with something that made sense. What and, were they trying to prove? I don't know. And you know what? How, you know, I, think it was, I think it was. Were fun. they trying to say that baseball is racist? Is that or that think, America's I was, racist. I, think, I, I, I read. Some, I'm sure the Boston papers had stuff on it. I didn't read much. They threw the. I think, three, I think they were going back to Boston's pretty shaky past as a, yeah. a place with a lot of problems. But, but I think it was kind of an interesting worry. You can take that different different ways. But what does that have to do with the new ownership, the players, the fans? No, I think what it, happened back in the 50s happened. Right, in the I'm 50s. just saying, from the folks who did it, I think it had to do with their concern about Boston's past. And, you tell me, how did I'm they just trying see to explain that it. huge, huge, huge easily, banner Very easily, very, very easily. They took a, apparently a young, attractive woman, kind of unassuming, wrapped it up tight and stuff, and they just waved her in. So they purposely had someone who would have been the last person yes. a guard would have even looked and at twice. Let me ask you twice. this. Probably how had they, a low-cut t-shirt very, They very easily got it in. How in the world did they get front row seats now, That's maybe on a the better monster, question. Because those are sold out by April 1st. Maybe unless they just kind of walked down there or something. Yeah. But they got it in very easily. I think one pitch was thrown until the umpire noticed that, yeah. and they said, ah, no, 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 no. Now, I will tell you, because I have this discussion with uh, some of my more writer-wing children all the time. And, and one of the things... All, are, you, you're, you're, you don't have any left-wing kids, right? There's any... Are they all pretty, pretty conservative? Natalie's probably like me. All right. She's at least in the middle. But she's in the journalist business, isn't yeah. she? There you go. Well, she's, uh, she works for the Diocese of Boston now. So. Oh, okay. Oh, you so she's, straight, she's straightened up. Huh? She's moving up. <laughs> but what I, oh, that's cool. what I think that we, and I've said this a hundred times, we don't understand. Yeah, it's hard for hard us to get Hard for on. us. We don't understand what these guys have gone through. Like, I was having this discussion with uh, with Bud and we were talking about uh, affirmative action, and I said, "Hey, you know what? They, it, you know, you go back 50, 60 years ago, there was 
there was there, was, uh, there was real problems, yeah. and still, still. And uh, but what I think's happened now in our country, we whine, we whine instead of, you know, in the old days, if somebody called you a name, if you were downtrodden, you worked your way up. And I think what we're what we don't have today, I don't believe that we, except for sports, have a way for a lot of these folks to move up. Yeah. And it ain't just um, well, racial. To me, it starts a, with the parents. Again, I've said seventy-five percent of the African American families are a single household, single mother. It just but doesn't. Hey, we got a city school. Probably 70% of the kids have to come in for breakfast because they aren't getting breakfast yeah. at well, home. Well, it's all free now. All, everybody gets a free breakfast. Everybody gets a free lunch. And the uh, parents don't have to parent anymore because even during the summer, schools are open up to go have lunch. It's uh, the, uh, well, the I mean, single. I guess, I guess that's better than if they're not having lunch, but I, I understand My your feeling point. is if you're not feeding your kids, take them out of the house, period. Yeah. I mean, that's the basic thing. You're going to have a kid. You got to clothe them, feed them. Well, you've got one generation after another where the k kids are are not getting trained. They they aren't getting good upbringing, and then they're having kids, and it, the cycle just keeps repeating itself. And what they try to do, and that's why part of why our education costs are so high, because a hundred percent of the guys that are down at the Holiday Inn on the Newton Road. At the correctional center. Okay. <laughs> okay. When you're saying how yeah. the holiday, I like the holiday. Yeah, I like the holiday. Inn. Of those got a guys holiday in pen there. Thank you, holiday. Inn. Don't have college degree. Uh, college degrees. Don't even have high school yeah, degrees. Say a hundred, almost. Uh, almost a hundred percent. Right. So, they know one thing for sure. If you don't have a high school diploma, yeah. your chances of getting in a, in a life of crime are significantly higher. Sure. And. And then I heard another interesting fact. There are, I think, 11,000 Vermonters between the ages of 18 and 25 who are not on any census. They aren't on a voting roll. They've got no degrees. These are the guys, the uh, opiate bunch. And you know, when the unemployment rate in Vermont is 2 3% and every businessman you talk to can't find help hey, ask any convenience to If we fast could get these guys if we could get these guys straightened out get them a job and get them working but yeah that's uh, those are those are yeah. big issues are you on that front i just I, I get more concerned about that by the day just you know businesses just not being able to find halfway decent just you know working you doing okay? Can you? We, I think what I read is that for skill level jobs, yeah. you can find good help. Yeah. There's, there's, because, because the pay is better. Yeah. And people like living here. As much as they hate the high taxes and the utilities. Good, good luck. If you're running a convenient, I mean, every but convenience the, store, fast food restaurant, everybody's got help. I got it. a buddy of mine that works, uh, my buddy, uh, Mr. O'Connell, yeah. was telling me at Farrell's. Yeah. They stopped doing drug tests on the guys to, at the warehouse because just, they couldn't get enough help. Is that, is that and they're right? paying 19 bucks an hour no, like, for warehouse help, and they can't get yeah. any. No, I, I believe you. Sounds um, like a huge issue. But when you're down in Florida, of course, it's always uh, Latinos doing the housekeeping in the hotel. Well, when I'm at Cape Cod, it's, it's a lot of European people they bring in and for of the course summer. they were hurt badly this summer trump cut way down on whatever the visa program is okay. like on martha's vineyard where some of the i mean i read a ton of stories in the globe and herald about the cape businesses in the past okay. they would bring in a lot of european yep. they, and they couldn't get one them. girl and she was impressed she was from macedonia really and she was impressed i knew where it was is that right which a lot of people probably Your don't Greece, of course. But, uh, there was another girl from romania uh, yeah. a russian girl uh, the, Tyler, hey, the Tyler place over there, I think, those, I think Tyler place has had a lot of uh, we, uh, European We help. just flew out to uh, Minnesota, well, actually All Wisconsin, right. for a wedding last week. And I'll tell you what, even in Minneapolis, the airport, if it weren't for these immigrants, yeah. they, there'd be nobody working. Yeah. These guys are all... That was a Jeopardy question the other night. The state with the most Somalians. Must be Minnesota. It's Minnesota. Really? 
Yeah, because it seems like there's a lot. Yeah. So let's talk some baseball here. We only have a week and a half left. Uh, How about my Yankees? Boy, they're hot. Here. So, if, boy, if, so if the Red Sox lose tonight, which you know, bound to lose one of these games, that would just be two games. With are the Yankees golf. playing tomorrow? Red I Sox think so. are off tomorrow. God, they could get I think the Yankees are playing Kansas City. One they got a half. makeup game tomorrow. For the record, I hardly, I, I hardly think the Red Sox are a lock. The, Yan- the Yankees are reminding me of my favorite movie, The Gang and uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sunday. Yeah. Kid. These guys are just not going away. Hey, did you see Jacoby Ellsbury? Three for four again today. Since the uh, last month and a half, huh. since he's come back, he's hit, hitting him. He's on, his on-base ba- percentage is over 550. Really? Wow. Now, the Yankees no, your guys are, playing are seven games up for that wild card spot. The Twinkies are fading. They're done. Uh, yeah. The LA Angels are one, been getting... one game behind the Twins. But both teams have lost six out of the last ten games. But uh, I would like to see the Twins. Who's the manager? Is it Paul Molitor? Paul Molitor is the manager of that team. If they get in, that's my vote for uh, manager. Joe, I think Joe made the point, unless you did, on the golf course Sunday, Red Sox yeah. may end up playing the, the Astros for possibly nine straight. They end the season with a four-game yes. series. And then they have the five-game series. But, again, I'm not – I'm assuming nothing. You Yankees have well, the Well, I got a feeling they're all playing for second place because uh, Cleveland – Cleveland's really good. Yeah, right. now, but I'm just saying and they're ready for prime time. Cleveland. Corey Kluber has distanced himself. There's Chris, no, Chris Sale, Sale is pitching tonight. Faded. Yeah, now, Sale had a good first inning tonight. Is all I can tell you. But in the American League, there's only two pitchers with ERAs under three. Chris Sale's at two, Sale. two eight six. Early. Kluber's down at two three five. Uh, yeah, so, Kluber. Kluber. In got the that National League, one. you've got five. Kershaw distance first two two six. Scherzer two five nine. Strasburg two six zero. Oh. Gio Gonzalez, 268. Huh. Granke, 2.87. Now, the Nats have three of the top four positions, the ERA. Wow. Last team to do that was the 1967 Chicago wow. White Sox. Joe Horner, remember Joe Horner? He won the ERA AL title that year. So, Joe, not Joel, Joe Horner, not Joel? I, th- I think with Joe Horner. Joe Horner. Gary yeah. Peters, that later went on I've to pitch the, with the Red Sox. Boss. And, uh, boy, I, I can't. Remember, great, the third guy, but that was an interesting stat. Uh, But the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League have very quietly caught up. Boy, Brewers are hanging tough, One game behind Colorado for that uh, wild card spot. In all the talk for MVP, I would like to see Paul Goldschmidt get it. Yeah, they're saying he's... But Nolan Arenado's got some unbelievable numbers. However, Hmm. Milwaukee was a horrible team last year. Now, Travis Shaw... In lieu of missing 15 games, ouch, just put my eye out, uh, batting 275, 30 home runs, 96 RBIs. Um, you know, name me another offensive player um, on the Brewers. He's carried that team. What happened to uh, Braun? Has he been hurt? Or Brian not? Braun was hurt, I and mean, he's played well. Uh, he's back now in left field. But uh, um, So that's pretty good. About 10 days left of baseball season. Brewers one game out, Angels one game out. Who are your guys? Uh, again, my guys are last game against Baltimore tonight, then off tomorrow, three games. I think games. we got Kansas City. Then they got Toronto next week and then with Houston. And we so got Toronto. We got? We've yeah. got Toronto, Kansas City. Yeah. I think they're almost all home games, so maybe Baltimore again. I'm, uh, for the record, I'm, always, I'm very concerned about your guys. Well, if there's a tie, the playoff game would be maybe. in New York. Is there a. So there's a playoff game. There's a playoff Yankees game. Yankees have won on the Monday. season series of a playoff yep. game. That's they, why they, they do the wild card that'll, that'll, that'll bring back some fine memories for me. Mike uh, Perez and, and yeah. Bucky. 1978. No. I was, I was, I'm sure I was watching. Yeah. And the Cubs have won, what, seven games in a row now? I can tell uh, you, Mr. Handy. I think uh, they have. The, no, your, your guys are, are playing. Cubs have won right seven here. games in Yankees a row. Yankees have a good team. Their starting pitching's pretty good. Uh, their bullpen is really good. Uh, I'll tell you who's really bullpen is, come back to full Her, throttle. Her oldest is back. Oh, yeah. wow. That game two nights ago against Minnesota. I think I heard him. I heard, I heard him. Betances, Betances, had, uh, Betances gets out of sync a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so he'd uh, walk the bases or whatever. The bases are loaded. Huh. One out. Chapman comes in. Joe Maurer. Who's a good player? I, heard, I was listening. In fact, yeah. Boom, boom, Bases boom. loaded one out. Come on, Minnesota. Jeez, Mary, you just need a fly ball. He Three straight out. pitches, 
over 100 miles each, was, and then the next guy pops up. I was listening. Up. I was listening. No, Duke, the Astros are a game and a half behind Cleveland, so we, um, we, we got to pray for Cleveland to win so you don't have to play Cleveland first God, round. Cleveland, last guys I want to yeah, see. Yeah. I, I think Cleveland, the Yankees, Wait, as good as they are, I don't think they're ready yet. I'm going to ask you the Cleveland basic, like the obvious question. Is there any possibility Cleveland has beat too early? I don't guess, think so. I guess you can say they just seem to be a very good team. And Tito is such a good, such a good manager. Is. And they've really got depth all over the place. And uh, their bullpen is really good. Their starters are a little bit come see, come so. But they're, they're, Andrew Miller, is he? Is he? What's the story with him? Back now. He just came back, back about a week ago. Now, Bra- Bryce team. Harper, he should be back next week and really? maybe get four or five games in yeah. before the playoffs. The Nats, it's been a tight season all year. 20 games up front. Oh, I think I, that, is that, does that, does that kind of hurt, hurt, hurt them? concerns me greatly. All right. And forget a big series. We yeah. haven't had one big game all year. And I'm sorry, but sports, huh. based on You need emotion, a little bit, of, yeah. yeah. And they have it's not too bad. Been they're almost pushed. Like, I mean, they're almost penalized for being so good in a way. Yeah. Well, it, their division is just It's, it's stinky. Oh. But I'll say this about the Nats. They've endured a ton of injury, 13 outfielders. This year, and they're probably going to end up with 97 wins uh. this year. But yeah, we're playing the Cubs, and David, it's all about getting hot at the right time. You just mentioned they're a seven game winning streak. I think the Cubs are good enough to turn it on, turn it off whenever they feel I like. Think, mm-hmm. And I think uh. Madden didn't push this team this year, saying, okay, we're mid September, let's, let's start. Hey, I'll tell you off. a team that scares me a little bit is the stupid Red Sox. No matter how far behind they are, yep. they do. I, I, they they can win the game in the bottom of the ninth yeah, inning. We don't give them enough credit. They do pull out some games uh, that it doesn't. And extra yeah, innings. Haven't they won unreal. like thirteen out of sixteen? Uh, They're fifteen and three extra innings. I mean, yeah, that's, that's fifteen a, that's and three extra innings. Oh, I'm a little I'm a little harsh dude, on them. They just I have don't never, give me a lot of confidence. Never heard anybody with a 15-3 and three record in extra innings. That, that's unreal. Never, and I would love to see. But pitching, I mean, geez, sales pitching tonight. He had a good first inning, gave up a hit at the start of the second inning. But there's no nobody. He's been shaky. I mean, you know, Porcello, 35 homers or so. Uh, Pomerantz I mean, has pitched pretty Pomerantz, good. Actually, Pomerantz, he could make a case as uh, number one pitcher at this moment. Duke. Our good um, friend, and everybody loves this guy, Doug Fister, has been shelled the last two games. Fister had a Is lousy he last out of game. The rotation, no, you good, think? good question. Because we, he was in when we were talking about it last week. I would say at this point, uh, he he might be at least back to number four. Well, so. the uh, uh, hard to say. Yeah. It's like the Yankees with uh, Jamie Garcia. Or Yaimi or whatever the hell yeah. his name is. And Sonny Sonny Gray hasn't been hasn't been he, great. Has Sonny he? Gray's been really good. He's had maybe he one bad game. Not really. But they've scored no runs for Sonny Gray. Okay, so who's been, your four-man rotation? Well, right now, I think they would start with Severino, though. He, he gave up three runs today. Uh, Severino will probably pitch the uh, wild card game. Then you got Tanaka. Mm-hmm. Then you got CC. And then any of the other uh, Montgomery, Garcia, uh, whoever else that comes along. Severino's actually fourth in the league with a 3.03 ERA. Boy, that's, so that's he's, he's had been pretty consistent. But he only went three innings today. Did they pull him? Yeah. Or? He three runs in three innings. Okay. Oh, really? Of course, I think the other thing, too, with Severino, I think he's a young guy, and I think they don't want him pitching too many innings. I agree. So there, there is a very strong correlation in... Look at like the Mets from two, three years ago. All their they everybody yeah. thought they were going to have uh, great Inclu- pitching, including me. And they went to the World Series, and those guys all their arms are all bad. Matt Harvey can't even; yeah. he's the worst pitcher oh, in baseball. I think he's given up twenty-one runs in the last three games. He's pitched right. a total of fourteen innings. Wow. Now, David, you're currently, as we sit, two and a half games out of first. Do you have any delusions? Of finishing in first place. It's, still, you, it's I mean, possible. I mean, all the Red Sox have to do is lose how, two, three how, games. How can you say it's not possible? Because there's only like 10 games left. But if the Red Sox lo- lose tonight, if they lose tonight, we're talking yeah. two games. But I'll tell you what. We only need the To time. the Yankees credit, Duke, if Houston's oh, got I'm a giving, chance to overcome Cleveland, yeah. Houston's going to try to win those games, the last four games. Oh, I'm yeah. giving, I, every week, I give the Yankees yeah. a ton of credit. I don't think that race is over at all. 
two, there could be two games yeah. after tonight. Yeah. Now I'm just assuming with Chris Hale pitching, I always assume. The, and the Red Sox, the starting oh. pitching has me really concerned. I'll tell you what, what a classic matchup tonight. You had Chris Sale. I don't even know how he's employed. I wouldn't even hire him at your shop. It was Chris Sale versus Wade Milley. Wade Miley. Miley. Oh, uh, Baltimore in, okay. is just a punching bag right he, now. He's, he, Coming in with a 5.83 ERA. But again, Sale's been in these matchups in the last month and a seeming obvious advantage Red Sox in his loss of games. Wade for the Miley. record, for the record uh, Sale had two strikeouts in the first inning to get him up to 289. Do you have your tweet machine? machine no, on your I don't. I, I left it at home. Okay. okay. But uh, Wade Miley's pitched some. He was doing really good for a while, but boy, I, Baltimore's pitching is just. David, just that's like. Why good. doesn't Dave Baltimore. Dan. Ever get any pitching in there? Because they their ownership won't let them spend the money. Okay, and uh, hmm. they have to go. They get their free agents mostly out of the bargain basement bin. It's like uh, Didn't they pick up Nelson Cruz for one year out of bargain bin because they had a horrible year. Right, he um, hit like forty four home runs. Then he signed a big um, contract with, with the Seattle. Mariners. Yeah, but they uh, like there's Trumbo a, is going to go the same route, but he ended up back back in town. Right? See, and they uh, they paid. Uh, uh, Davis, a yeah. lot of money, yeah. um, and I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I'm not, wasn't so sure that was the right idea of Major League Baseball putting a franchise in D.C. They're only 38 miles apart, and these are two heavily populated cities. Of course, I'm sure po- and, politics had nothing to do with it. The yeah, nation's exactly. capital. And again, then Washington does have some history. Hey, it might be worth talking golf for a second where oh, we got the last the big last, championship, East Lake. Atlanta this tomorrow, week. Tomorrow down to the top 30 golfers in the FedEx standing board. Mark Leishman, what a, what well, a, had a guy a, played out of his mind. He was hot. Now, this week. week, the Tour champion, it's only 30 players? Only 30, 30. top 30. And again, if the, the top, top 30 five, from the FedEx? It's, a, the, I mean, it's the, the same thing. The top 30 in the point system. Just the, FedEx the top 30 point. in the FedEx point system. And the guys system. that can win the championship are really only the top five. And if you're in the top five, if you're the top five and if you win this week, if you're number five in the fifth place and you win this week, you get the 10 mil. Yeah. So these guys are playing for something this oh, weekend. Yeah, not I, to, mean, I mean, not to mention the regular money. They were saying 10 million or 3 million. <coughs> so the regular money is first place? Are you joking For me? The, if you win the FedEx Cup, it's $10 million. Uh, if you come in right. second, it's $3 million. Oh, is that right? Okay. So not, to, not to mention money. just the money from the tournament itself. Okay. So I should be watching this Oh, weekend. yeah. This is okay. top 30. This is big time. And, of course, next weekend, the President's Cup. Is that a four-day event, the President's uh, Cup, or three? Three. three, three just three. like the writer, Friday, okay. Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah, that's coming up, yeah. too. But, no, this is big. I mean, this is, this is pretty okay. big this weekend. In the President's Cup? It's where? where it says you. It's definitely U.S. Is it Ohio? I it's can't in New Jersey. I Jersey. think. Sorry, Jersey. It's actually yeah. Jersey City. Yeah. Jersey City. New York skyline will be inside. Okay. Yeah. Boy, it seems like funny. Where, 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 where the hell have they got the land in Jersey City? Well, from? it's the uh, <laughs> the place where they usually do the, 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 the no something? the FedEx. They had the FedEx Cup. Usually, the first one is in <coughs> is at that oh, course, no. but they didn't have it there this oh, year. No. They uh, had it at a different course because they were getting it ready for the President's Cup. Okay, interesting. But yeah, Jersey City for President's Cup. Yeah. But yeah, that's of some. That's of some note. Yeah. Yeah. Hawk, hawk, geez, hockey's about to start. Uh, you've been riveted to uh, your your Habs. Um, the Canadians were up on the Bruins. The I'll tell you what, exhibition hockey is. Worse than uh, exhibition I couldn't, baseball. I couldn't. I wouldn't even think. Well, uh, actually, I, I watch actually. Uh, well, they have I'll a few fights, so don't they? How about me? I listen on radio to about five minutes the other I day. I listen to a little bit of Canadians against the Cats. No. I trust Quebec City. I trust it was a full house up there for was. that game. Bruins were down two nothing. They came back went three two. Oh really? I think Malcolm Subban did some time in really? that. Uh, God, I forgot about him. But if you want to see a game, hopefully you're not as pathetic as I am. NHL Network will replay the game for you the, the following day. Is that right? Because so I've got the cat. So I will scout, you know, some of the younger players. But I uh, say that, but once I get into it, and when you watch a meaningless game, generally about 20 minutes into it, you shut it Hawk, off. Hawk, this is Dan Shaughnessy's column in the Globe today in front of me. little buzz around these bees. Just read a little bit. Four is a number always associated with the Boston Bruins. You can tell me why especially. A certain player who had number four? Robert Orr. Oh, very good. Bobby Orr, uh, you, you would certainly agree. The greatest hockey player of all time, Orr number four. Black and gold number four jerseys pepper the stands whenever, wherever the Bruin, whenever the Bruins play. The last Bruins sports 
I'm sorry, the last, the best Boston sports bar is the Fours on Canal Street. Okay. And Shaughnessy just goes, just no, no buzz. And then, and, and the, and the Boston hierarchy, Patriots have gotten way ahead of the Red Sox, but Patriots, Red Sox, Celtics getting a ton of buzz with their trade in the Bruins, yeah. Duke, really on the bottom. Bobby Orr, my opinion, I know a lot of people say Gretzky, and that's fine. Uh, revolutionized the game. He was the best. Right the second best guy was that far. Where when Gretzky played, it was that far. But the thing about Bobby Orr, in our lifetime, I don't think yeah, he was fun. A, he a was nicer fun to watch. individual great guy. than Bobby Orr. No greater no, gentleman. Yeah, right. Great. No, what a guy. Not braggadocious. I read it. I think I got it from you. Yeah, the I Bobby think I Orr you, biography yeah, he wrote. It was kind of a bland book. Yeah. Uh, but even I loved it, when he uh, took off with one of his pals. Uh, and they went went back home with the Stanley Cup or something. No, no. When he was still back to Perry Sound. When yeah, when he was uh, in juniors, and then who's there but his coach? And the coach was uh, recruiting some kid, and uh, I said, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Yeah. And, Didn't you uh, tell me the Bruins had like territorial rights to him yes, or something? They That's how they got him. Well, I mean. Wow. It was all different back then. Like the Canadians had Quebec. Oh, like like right. the Celtics Quebec. getting players like Bob Cousy out of Holy Cross. Right. The old Territ and by Tommy Heinsohn out of Holy yes. Cross. Yeah. yeah. That's. You know, when we got Guy Lafleur, I think we drafted him 1971. He played juniors huh. with the Quebec Ramparts. Huh. We had made a trade a year or two earlier huh. and, and with the California just Golden so they, Seals. Just so they could get for him? For the first pick of the Seals. Really? And we just gave up. A few veteran players, wow. and Lafleur came, huh. and he was terrible for the first three really? years. Wore the stupid helmet, took the helmet out. His hair was. I can. I, I can picture being in the in at the Montreal Forum with him just go, skating right. down with his, his hair. hair. Um, I can picture him and perfectly. The greatest hair of any hockey player. <laughs> Check it out, Ron Duguay of the New York Rangers. Ron what a Duguay. what a nice head of hair this guy had. <laughs> Uh, but hockey was fun because people wore long hair during the 70s, and they made sure they looked good, too. And, of course, it was all styled back then. But Phil Esposito, Espo had some hair. Yeah. Well, uh, he wasn't, uh, he did no, have long, just, long hair. He, no, but, yeah. I mean, just kind of some yeah. good, good hair. Yeah. The, uh, those, uh, those days were a lot more fun so, than us. So is, is NHL use, hanging in there? Or is, uh, well, it was more fun. The youth were the word respect. People didn't have helmets. And I would, if I was commissioner, I'd bad, get rid bad of move, helmets. Huh? I would no. get rid of helmets in the NHL. Huh. And that way they would keep their sticks down and they wouldn't go after Aren't they the cutting? Heads. Didn't I hear listening to that Bruins-Montreal game, the, the Bruins radio guys slashing? Aren't they getting real... If you're doing like if you if you touch if you touch a stick anywhere near the guy's yeah, ankle or something. Last year they, no pun intended, cracked down. Sounds like they're really on cracking it down. On well, it. until the playoffs. Yeah, they don't call when they, they don't call anything. And the problem too during the regular season is Dave and I whine about every week. Yeah. It's just not enough scoring. So if you have an offensive chance, that, even, that doesn't usually bother me. That even bothers me a little bit. Sometimes it just seems get the puck in the net. Well, How, you know they do, can't do it. There's not. Enough scoring, let alone the goal scoring, even legitimate scoring chances. Yeah. Because all I say to you is, yeah. you go back to your youth, 50, yeah. 60 years ago. Yeah. These goalies were Eddie Jockerman sure. was about 160 pounds. Not to mention away. the equipment. Which oh, we, which about. we've right. talked about before. And David knows one, it. One oh, plus, the whole style of hockey yeah. is all from the net out. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, we talked about David Pasternak last week. He rejected a six-year, thirty-six million dollar contract. They kicked it up to six year forty. He got sixty forty. So he got an extra four mil. million from, the, from the Bruins. Bruins. Okay. Twenty-one years young, of age. Young, good, Is big he good? story. And good. lastly, about the Bruins, they will go as far as Tuka Rask. Our yeah, good friend Joe said the problem with Tuka the last couple of years. They've over, he's they've, turned into an average goaltender. And they played him too much. They can't play him as much. He needs to be right. He they, needs to be better. I think he needs to be on the bench a little more. So, uh, that's it. That will conclude this edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. For the Duke, Mr. Dave, Miss Joanne, I am the Nighthawk. And until next week, as always, remember, you do not have to be a great athlete to be a good sport. Ciao for now. Go Dukies. Beat those Tar Heels.